Mongol Pandi the 19th of July 1827 to the 8th of April 1857 was an Indian soldier who played a key part in events immediately preceding the outbreak of the Indian Rebellion of 1857 he was a sepoy Sipahi in the 34th Bengal Native Infantry BNI Regiment of the British East India Company. While contemporary British opinion denounced him as a traitor and mutineer, Pandi is widely regarded as a hero in modern India. In 1984, the Indian government issued a postage stamp to commemorate him. His life and actions have also been portrayed in several cinematic productions and books. Early life Mongol Pandi was born on 19 July 1827 in a Brahmin family in Nagwa, a village of Upper Balia district, ceded and conquered provinces now in Uttar Pradesh. He had joined the Bengal army in 1849. In March 1857 Pandi was a private soldier in the 5th Company of the 34th Bengal Native Infantry BNI. The 1857 incident On the afternoon of 29 March 1857, Lieutenant Ba, adjutant of the 34th Bengal Native Infantry, then stationed at Barakpur was informed that several men of his regiment were in an excited state. Further, it was reported to him that one of them, Mongol Pandi, was pacing in front of the regiment's guard room by the parade ground, armed with a loaded musket, calling upon the men to rebel and threatening to shoot the first European that he set eyes on. Testimony at a subsequent enquiry recorded that Pandi, unsettled by unrest amongst the sepoys and intoxicated by the narcotic bang, had seized weapons and run to the quarter guard building upon learning that a detachment of British soldiers was disembarking from a steamer near the cantonment. Ba immediately armed himself and galloped on his horse to the lines. Pandi took position behind the station gun, which was in front of the quarter guard of the 34th, took aim at Ba and fired. He missed Ba, but the bullet struck his horse in the flank bringing both the horse and its rider down. Ba quickly disentangled himself and, seizing one of his pistols, advanced towards Pandi and fired. He missed. Before Ba could draw his sword, Pandi attacked him with a talwar a heavy Indian sword and closing with the adjutant, slashed Ba on the shoulder and neck and brought him to the ground. It was then that another sepoy, Sheikh Paltu, intervened and tried to restrain Pandi even as he tried to reload his musket. English Sergeant Major Hewson had arrived on the parade ground, summoned by a native officer, before Ba. He had ordered Jamadar Ishwari Prasad, the Indian officer in command of the quarter guard, to arrest Pandi. To this, the Jamadar stated that his NCOs had gone for help and that he could not take Pandi by himself. In response Hewson ordered Ishwari Prasad to fall in the guard with loaded weapons. In the meantime, Ba had arrived on the field shouting, Where is he? Where is he? Hewson in reply called out to Ba, Ride to the right, sir, for your life. The sepoy will fire at you. At that point Pandi fired. Hewson had charged towards Pandi as he was fighting with Lieutenant Ba. While confronting Pandi, Hewson was knocked to the ground from behind by a blow from Pandi's musket. The sound of the firing had brought other sepoys from the barracks, they remained mute spectators. At this juncture, Sheikh Paltu, while trying to defend the two Englishmen called upon the other sepoys to assist him. Assailed by other sepoys, who threw stones and shoes at his back, he called on the guard to help him hold Pandi, but they threatened to shoot him if he did not let go of the mutineer. Some of the sepoys of the quarter guard then advanced and struck at the two prostrate officers. They then threatened Sheikh Paltu and ordered him to release Pandi, whom he had been vainly trying to hold back. However, Paltu continued to hold Pandi until Ba and the sergeant major were able to get up. Himself wounded by now, Paltu was obliged to loosen his grip. He backed away in one direction and Ba and Hewson in another, while being struck with the butt ends of the guard's muskets. In the meantime, a report of the incident had been carried to the commanding officer General Hersey, who then galloped to the ground with his two officer sons. Taking in the scene, he rode up to the guard, drew his pistol and ordered them to do their duty by seizing Mongol Pandi. The general threatened to shoot the first man who disobeyed. The men of the quarter guard fell in and followed Hersey towards Pandi. Pandi then put the muzzle of the musket to his chest and discharged it by pressing the trigger with his foot. He collapsed bleeding, with his regimental jacket on fire, but not mortally wounded. Pandi recovered and was brought to trial less than a week later. 
When asked whether he had been under the influence of any substances, he stated steadfastly that he had mutinied on his own accord and that no other person had played any part in encouraging him. He was sentenced to death by hanging, along with Jamadar Ishwari Prasad, after three Sikh members of the quarter guard testified that the latter had ordered them not to arrest Pandi. Mongol Pandi's execution was scheduled for 18 April, but was carried out ten days before that date. Jamadar Ishwari Prasad was executed by hanging on 21 April. <laughs> Aftermath The 34th BNI. Regiment was disbanded, with disgrace, on 6 May as a collective punishment, after an investigation by the government, for failing to perform their duty in restraining a mutinous soldier and their officer. That came after a period of six weeks while petitions for leniency were examined in Calcutta. Sepoy Sheikh Paltu was promoted to Havildar Sergeant for his behavior on 29 March but was murdered in an isolated part of the Bharatpur cantonment shortly before the regiment was disbanded. The Indian historian Surendra Nath Sen notes that the 34th BNI had a good recent record and that the Court of Enquiry had not found any evidence of a connection with unrest at Burampur involving the 19th BNI four weeks before. See below. However, Mongol Pandi's actions and the failure of the armed and on-duty sepoys of the quarter guard to take action convinced the British military authorities that the whole regiment was unreliable. It appeared that Pandi had acted without first taking other sepoys into his confidence but that antipathy towards their British officers within the regiment had led most of those present to act as spectators, rather than obey orders. Motivation. <inaudible> <inaudible> The personal motivation behind Pandi's behavior remains confused. During the incident itself he shouted to other sepoys, Come out, the Europeans are here. From biting these cartridges we shall become infidels. And, You sent me out here, why don't you follow me? At his court martial he stated that he had been taking bang and opium, and was not conscious of his actions on 29 March. There were a wide range of factors causing apprehension and mistrust in the Bengal army immediately prior to the Bharakpur event. Pandi's reference to cartridges is usually attributed to a new type of bullet cartridge used in the Enfield P-53 rifle which was to be introduced in the Bengal army that year. The cartridge was thought to be greased with animal fat, primarily from cows and pigs, which could not be consumed by Hindus and Muslims respectively the former a holy animal of the Hindus and the latter being abhorrent to Muslims. The cartridges had to be bitten at one end before use. The Indian troops in some regiments were of the opinion that this was an intentional act of the British, with the aim of defiling their religions. Colonel S. Wheeler of the 34th BNI was known as a zealous Christian preacher. The wife of Captain William Halliday of the 56th BNI had the Bible printed in Urdu and Devanagari and distributed among the sepoys, thus raising suspicions amongst them that the British were intent on converting them to Christianity. The 19th and 34th Bengal Native Infantry were stationed at Lucknow during the time of annexation of Oudh in 1856 because of alleged misgovernment by the Nawab. The annexation had negative implications for sepoys in the Bengal army a significant portion of whom came from that princely state. Before the annexation, these sepoys had the right to petition the British resident at Lucknow for justice. A significant privilege in the context of native courts. As a result of the East India Company's action they lost that special status, since OUDH no longer existed as a nominally independent political entity. The 19th BNI is important because it was the regiment charged with testing the new cartridges on 26 February 1857. However, right up to the mutiny the new rifles had not been issued to them, and the cartridges in the magazine of the regiment were as free of grease as they had been through the preceding half-century. The paper used in wrapping the cartridges was of a different color, arousing suspicions. The noncommissioned officers of the regiment refused to accept the cartridges on 26 February. This information was conveyed to the commanding officer, Colonel William Mitchell. He took it upon himself to try to convince the sepoys that the cartridges were no different from those they had been accustomed to and that they need not bite it. He concluded his exhortation with an appeal to the native officers to uphold the honor of the regiment and a threat to court-martial such sepoys as refused to accept the cartridge. However, the next morning the sepoys of the regiment seized their bell of arms weapons store. The subsequent conciliatory behavior of Mitchell convinced the sepoys to return to their barracks. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Court of Enquiry. A court of enquiry was ordered which, after an investigation lasting nearly a month, recommended the disbanding of the 19th BNI. The same was carried out on 31 March. The 19th BNI were allowed to retain items of uniform and were provided by the government with allowances to return to their homes. Both Colonel Mitchell of the 19th BNI and subsequent to the incident of 29 March Colonel Wheeler of Pondy's 34th BNI were declared unsuited to take charge of any new regiments raised to replace the disbanded units. Consequences <inaudible> 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 The attack by and punishment of Pandi is widely seen as the opening scene of what came to be known as the Indian Rebellion of 1857. Knowledge of his action was widespread amongst his fellow sepoys and is assumed to have been one of the factors leading to the general series of mutinies that broke out during the following months. Mongol Pandi would prove to be influential for later figures in the Indian nationalist movement like V.D. Savarkar, who viewed his motive as one of the earliest manifestations of Indian nationalism. Modern Indian nationalists portray Pandey as the mastermind behind a conspiracy to revolt against the British, although a recently published analysis of events immediately preceding the outbreak concludes that, "...there is little historical evidence to back up any of these revisionist interpretations." <laughs> Film, stage and literature A film based on the sequence of events that led up to the mutiny entitled Mongol Pandi, the rising starring Indian actor, Amir Khan along with Rani Mukherjee, Toby Stevens and Amisha Patel, directed by Keaton Mehta was released on 12 August 2005. The Life of Pandi was the subject of a stage play titled The Roti Rebellion, which was written and directed by Supriya Karanakaran. The play was organized by Sparsh, a theater group, and presented in June 2005 at the Moving Theater at Andhra Saraswat Parishad, Hyderabad, Andhra Pradesh. Samad Iqbal, a fictional descendant of Mongol Pandi, is a central character in Zadie Smith's debut novel White Teeth. Pandi is an important influence on Samad's life and is repeatedly referenced and investigated by the novel's characters. English language In the English language, Pandi is best remembered for the word his surname and his actions helped coin, Pandi, a traitor, particularly a rebellious sepoy of the mutiny of 1857. Once a colloquial term widely used by English speakers in India, the word is now obsolete. Commemoration The Government of India commemorated Pandi by issuing a postage stamp bearing his image on 5 October 1984. The stamp and the accompanying first day cover were designed by Delhi-based artist C. R. Pakrashi. A park named Shahid Mongol Pandi Maha Yudian has been set up at Barakpur to commemorate the place where Pandi attacked British officers and was subsequently hanged. See also Barakpur mutiny of 1824 Pandi Bahadur Shah II